mix things up a little bit this time. So our standard format of uh, splitting the presentation and the activity is uh, not happening. Instead, we uh, have the networking phase and uh, uh, announcements and whatnot up front, and then we'll pass it on to Peter that I'll introduce in a few minutes. And, uh, and then he'll take it from there and uh, intersperse breaks and activity and presentation and mix it up for you guys. So um, let's see what I have here. Um, there's a few announcements. Uh, and uh, if you uh, want to just think uh, if, if you know of any other events or activities that uh, the community would be interested in, then I'll, uh, I'll get you to, uh, to announce them yourselves in a second. Um, oh. We have over 2,500 members now in Agile TO. So a few things that are coming up. Uh, Agile Lunch is happening this Friday. And I don't have a URL for that, but it's on Meetup, so you can find that easily enough. Not sure if there are any spaces left, but uh, you can check that out and uh, get on the list for next time. It's a great event. Uh, Agile Drinks is coming up. Michael? April 11th. April 11th. OK. And that's, uh, that's Meetup as well, right? Good. Uh, systems Thinking is tomorrow, once again on Meetup, so you can find that there. They had space last time I looked. Yeah, usually. Yeah. Uh, Scrum Gathering is coming up next week. Any, any representatives here from Scrum Gathering? It's sold out. All right, well, that makes it easier. Have a nice time at Scrum Gathering if you're going. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, did you want to speak to the uh, whiteboard yeah. over there? Yeah, so we just got a little announcements board where people can write any URLs or things coming up so that people can find references. And we also have a little retro board as well. So if you have positive or negative uh, feedback, experience, whatever, and some uh, ideas or questions for us, please write them up. And uh, we're going to try and improve things every time based on your input. So please share. Oh, we have another event. Yeah. What's your event, Jeff? Play for Agile. Oh, Play for Agile. Here you go. Play for Agile. So registration is about to open. If it's, I just checked, it's not open now, but it'll probably be open tomorrow or the day after. It's uh, September 20th to 23rd. It's four days, so the cost has gone up to represent four days held in Cornwall. All the information is available on the Play for Agile North com website, but it's Play, the numeral for Agile North America. Play for Agile. I'll put it up on the board. Actually, if I could get an assistant to do that for me, that would be great. Play for Agile North America dot com. All one word. All uppercase. No, it's not all uppercase. Is that the tag? You need a marketing term. The uh, Toronto Agile Community Open Space is coming up on April 21st. So that's another great uh, opportunity. So. Uh, Definitely, if you, uh, uh, if you like open space, which who doesn't, then uh, I'd, I would certainly recommend that. Um, oh, yeah. Here we are at Wrangle again. Uh, can I get a round of applause for this amazing facility? <laughs> Much as we've enjoyed uh, moving the meetup around to different locations over the past several iterations, there's a lot of logistical overhead and headaches and hassles, and Wrangle have been absolutely amazing in terms of hosting us and helping us with everything to, uh, to make this happen. So we're really, really pleased to be back and uh, excited to uh, uh, have this as uh, something of a permanent home where, uh, where we can host for, uh, for the foreseeable future. So uh, really excited about that. So uh, is Farah around? Farah, are you here? No? Okay, well, we'll perhaps I invite Wrangle up at the end to say a few words about, uh, about the company. But uh, yeah, very excited to have him as a premium sponsor. Definitely. Oops. Uh, I think I. They, uh, oh, there are, I guess there are a few things on here. Uh, just some things to subscribe to. Uh, so, Agile TO, we have a YouTube channel, we have a Twitter account. Uh, get yourselves on there. Um, Michael Sahoda asked us to uh, let you know about a 20% discount on his uh, certified Agile leadership. So uh, take a picture of that because uh, memorizing that URL is probably unlikely. <laughs> um, 
any other announcements, any other events that uh, haven't been mentioned that uh, people would like to uh, uh, share with the group? No. When is the mini coach retreat? Talk to Peter's face. Oh. You know what? There's a, a whiteboard over there as well. So if you think of something over the course of the evening that uh, hasn't been mentioned, fire it up on the board. Uh, just to mention, we're, we're live streaming this whole event tonight on our YouTube channel. So if you subscribe to that, that'd be great. And uh, you can find, hopefully, going forward, we'll be live streaming every, every event for those who can't make it. It might depend on the presenter and so on, but that, that's our plan. OK. I guess the only other things, I, I was going to say where the washrooms are, but I have no idea. Who can tell me? Over there. Out in the corridor, right? You go out right. where you came in for the elevators and somewhere that way. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, there are beverages, including water, in the uh, coolers over there. So uh, help yourselves. Those are uh, all fair game. Uh, I presume there might still be pizza left if you're hungry still. Lots of pizza. All right. Excellent. Um, and uh, I guess the only other thing is uh, everybody knows the drill. When you see hands up, stop talking, raise your own hand, and, uh, and then uh, pay attention to probably Peter. So, uh, oops. so uh, our speaker for this evening is uh, Peter Lupian. He's, uh, uh, let, let's see here, what do, what do I have about Peter? So uh, according to, uh, uh, to Peter, he helps bold leaders future-proof their businesses. Now, he claims this is hard. And uh, as many of us know, <laughs> it definitely is. Uh, the innovation mindset, mindset shift is a drastic one. Uh, Peter would have it no other way, as this is the work he loves. And he has kindly agreed to share a piece of it with us tonight. Peter, where are you? Uh, yeah, well, thank you. Thank you, Tom. That was a very kind introduction. Um, is my little clicker thingy there? It is. That's very exciting. Whoa, that was in front of the speaker. Am I sounding echoey? I feel echoey. Yeah? Okay, cool. Oh, it would really help if I had my slide deck up, wouldn't it now? Um, please don't read my email. Or go ahead. Uh-oh. There we go. All right. Um, so as advertised, um, what I am going to be talking about this evening, and you guys are going to be working on, actually, before we even get started, I see some straggly kind of people who are on tables on their own. That is not going to work well for you. So what I want you to do, and you, sir, are a prime example. I can tell that you are dying to go join another table to make five. You are, aren't you? And there, let's give this gentleman a hand. Sorry, Ollie. Ollie, we'll give him a hand because he's modeling the behavior that we want right now. So please, before I get started, find yourself in tables of five or six, but uh, no less than, no, forget it, five or six. Five or six. Please, go ahead. If, uh, okay. If, if facilitators want to join a table just to make up the numbers, that would be great. So if facilitators want to join a table, that'd be helpful. Well, this is certainly happening very quickly. You guys are very good at making tables of five and six. Yep. Okay. 
Yeah, I mean, even. Okay, are we good? Okay, I'm going to start. I am going to start. Are we ready? Good. Three, two, one, done. Just make, yeah, make tables if you still need to make tables. Just don't be like one or two of you because that's going to be unbelievably boring. Um, you guys are going to be doing a whole heck of a lot of activity uh, for the next hour and ish. We're going to have a break in the middle um, so that you guys can uh, get some steam whistle and network. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. It's going to be a lot of fun. So let's get into this. So out of curiosity, um, how many of you guys, how many of you would you say work in an agile environment? And I'm air quoting that because it's open to interpretation. Work in an agile environment. Hands up. Okay. That's very strange for this crowd. Okay, cool. So how many of you have found yourself in this very position, doing a kick-ass job, which we do as Agilists, of building completely the wrong product. Fantastic. Well, the, for the rest of you, uh, basically, I should give this thing up, and you guys can kind of come up here and, 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 uh, and kind of run people through what, uh, uh, what I'm about to run through, because that's, that's kind of the hard part. Um, and what I want to do is I want to share a story of how I fell victim to this very thing. So. I was at one of the colored banks in town, one of those colored, yeah, one of the colors. Um, I'm not going to give up the details, come on, I'm about to protect the innocent here. I'm not going to name names or colors or anything like that. So, what? I can't even hear you back there. Okay, no cat calling. So, now, um, uh, one of the colored banks, um, I showed up to uh, this meeting. It was my first meeting with this team. And there were, call it, seven or eight people around a table. So uh, I sit down, and they start talking about, as banks will do when they, uh, they want to promote a product, an interrupt for a product. Let's say it's a credit card. Interrupt for a credit card. So you know those annoying things when you kind of log into your banking app, and it goes, hey, do you want this offer? And you feverishly search for the no thanks and leave me alone forever button? Those interrupts. So, I'm sitting there, hey, I'm, I'm the consultant new guy, I can ask ridiculously stupid questions. So I said, um, ex excuse me, executives, um, uh, what evidence do you have that an interrupt is the best way to sell this credit card? And uh, the senior executive at the table was like, look, Peter, Peter, I'm, I'm sorry, this is, it's, it's our bad. It's our, it's our bad. We, we, didn't, we didn't really explain this to you because uh, around this table, there are, and he's counting up in his head, counting up in his head, 847, no, 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 849 years of digital marketing experience. And then that was it. And then they kept talking about other stuff. So I was like, okay, I'm sorry. So what evidence do you have that this is the case? And I was basically told to shut it down. So what did I do? Did I kind of push back and continue pushing back at that point in time in my career? No, I didn't. I wasn't comfortable doing that. And what did we do? We went and built this stupid thing. And did it move the needle on credit card sales? No. <laughs> so, you know, unfortunately, months and months and months of human capital pretty much down the drain. Because what we didn't do is understand why we were building this thing and who it might be for. So, really, for me, I just found this quote the other day, we fell into kind of the first category that's on this slide, when really what we should be doing, no matter what product we build at the end of the day, we should be falling more into the second category that's on this slide. Uh, I already had an intro, so um, if you're wondering who the hell I am, here's a couple of more details, um, and I'm happy to share more after the fact. So now, you guys are going to get a little taste of this. So, activity number one. So now, each table is a separate company. So you guys all are a separate company. 
And your mission with the sheets of paper that you have at your table, the blank sheets of paper, your mission is to build and sell paper airplanes. You have three minutes to satisfy that mission starting right now. Uh, you are halfway through, halfway through, one and a half minutes in, one and a half minutes. Forty five seconds left. <laughs> That's impressive. That is less impressive. Twenty seconds. That's not very impressive. 10 seconds. All right, your time is up. Your time is up. Your time is up. Who made, okay, you can put your hands down now. Who made money? Which teams made money? You, ma you made money? How much did you make? Sweet. You asked questions. What questions did you ask? Could, do we have a mic somewhere? You did? Oh, you guys are feeling like this is incredibly unfair. There are no prizes, by the way, except fake money. So uh, it's all good. Uh, anyone else? It, so you asked questions. What questions? Hello? Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Who's our customer? Who's our customer? That's a crazy question. Yeah, okay. What about you guys? You guys made money. What did you do? Why do, you, why do you want a plane? Oh, okay. Huh, that's a reasonable question. Um, okay, how about who, who didn't make any money? That's okay. Hey, the first time I ran this, I made like Zilcho money. Um, uh, uh, how many airplanes did you guys make? Three? Okay, who else didn't make any money? How many airplanes did you guys make? One prototype. There we go. One prototype. All right, cool. What's that? It was high fidelity. Yeah, I'm sure it was high fidelity. Um, okay, well, good news. You guys get another kick at the can. So you're the same companies. 
you've got the exact same parameters, you've got the exact same mission, and you've got another three minutes to make some money. Go. Has anything changed since these first batch after you had a chance to connect with him? When he has a prototype. Cool. How many of them do you need? <laughs> okay, okay, that's it. Just keep going. Going. Oh, what constitutes a plane? Like if I if I just close it in half. It's gonna look like a plane. Okay. <laughs> Are you paying a dollar for a plane? How about two dollars for a plane? What? That is an argument. <laughs> What if it has two sticky notes, so... That's my idea, I'll make a favorite play. I like the parts of that. Two minutes remaining. Two minutes. I think it would have been a funny train. It would be like, oh, hey. One yellow. Speaking of constraints, we ran out of Oh, thank you. Some impressive airplanes flying around here. Very impressive. Uh, so we have no insurance around here, so please don't aim them at anyone, namely me. A minute and 20 seconds remaining in round number two to make some freaking money. One minute remaining to make some money. One minute. Thirty seconds, your last thirty seconds to make some money. If only there were customers in the room that could give you money and purchase airplanes. If only there were these people somewhere in the room with the last ten seconds to make some money. Five, four, three, two, whoa, who's throwing airplanes at me? All right. Whoa. Oh, we have we have lots of money changing hands over here. Holy smokes. Okay, yep. No, there's there are no there's no winners here. There's actually there's beer for the winner. Okay. Uh who made money that round? Who, so leave your hand in the air, keep your hands up, leave your hand in the air if you didn't make any money the first time around. Oh, there, we have, so we have fraudsters in our midst, um, but uh, I did mention something about banks. Oh, Jesus, I said that out loud, sorry. Um, so uh, I don't even want to understand what went on over there. So uh, any team who made no money the first round and money the second round, I want to hear from you. What did you do differently? Anyone? You nominated a customer. You nominated a customer. And does she does your money in. look like that? No, it looks like this. Oh! <laughs> I, have, I, I have no comeback to that. Um, I think uh, you need a cut, though. What? You need I, to take a cut. Yeah, I need the whole thing, actually. Um, so uh, besides you guys who invented a customer, I, li I love your creativity. Was Peter, over here. Did, okay, you guys invented a customer, too. You guys, okay, yep. We have real fake money, so we you just... You have real, this money. We discovered the customer, and we yep. decided to talk to them and That's ask crazy. what they wanted. 
Wow. And how did that feel? It was fun. Yeah, and what, like, how, how was that different from the first time? Like, what did you do? So did you just kind of built the first time, or well, what did you do? The first time we hadn't figured out that he was supposed to be our customer, so we okay. were saying, gee, we don't have a customer, Yep. but we've got to build a plane, so we've built a plane. So you did? Yes. All right. Cool. Um, so, uh, you know, I love the creativity of the fraudsters in the audience, and actually, you know, the, uh, the actual real money that changed hands. I wonder where that fiber is going to end up. If it doesn't have a home, uh, certainly I have pockets. Uh, so, so here's, uh, some of you guys figured this out. There were, so each of the facilitators, so anyone who has a, uh, a butterfly on their name tag, had a whole bunch of fake money. And each of those people had a specific requirement that they were looking for, me included. Uh, I had a wad of money. You didn't ask me. You said, are there customers? I said, yes. And then you didn't ask me any other questions. <laughs> I said, yes, they are in the room. And that was a true statement. So the exercise here is, look, like, as, as you guys probably realized, that the instinct is to build. Build first and figure out who the customer is later. Granted, this is a contrived exercise to get you to kind of do that. Now, for those of you who invented a customer, you know, good stuff. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you were like, well, I can't just build paper airplanes for nobody, so I should be building them for somebody. You guys came up with what the paper airplane should do. Good stuff. So imagine if we kind of brought a little bit more of that to the products we build for, you know, the banks we work for, the insurance companies we work for, the startups we work for, uh, who, by the way, are not all absolutely fantastic at doing what I'm about to in introduce you to uh, as, a, uh, as a canvas. That helps us kind of decompose and structure who in the heck we're building this stuff for and what they value at the end of the day. So how do we develop an understanding for the value that our product provides? I'm going to introduce to you today, and you guys are going to be working on this in a second, something called the Value Proposition Canvas. Has anyone heard of the Value Proposition Canvas? Okay, well, besides the facilitators. <laughs> okay, a few of you. Cool. So uh, for many of you, this is going to be a new tool. So uh, what I'm going to do is show you the actual video um, that is... Uh, uh, from Strategizer, which, by the way, was uh, partially a Toronto startup. Um, I'm not quite sure if the value proposition canvas was, uh, was the Toronto's portion or uh, a contribution to Strategizer. But here's a video that's going to walk you through. So you guys, sorry, one other thing. You guys should have a value proposition canvas in the middle of your table, and it's got a post-it note on it. And that post-it note should have a company name, or a product name, I should say. It'll either be Jira everyone's favorite product, <laughs> Facebook, or Airbnb. So one of those three. So now what this video is going to do is it's going to walk you through, in essence, the process that I'm going to follow as well. Uh, there are two sides to this canvas, and this video is going to walk you through how you're going to fill out these two sides. Every day, companies design products and services to improve their customers' lives. But 72% of new product and service innovations fail to deliver on expectations. This means that customers don't care about 7 out of 10 new products introduced to the market. It doesn't have to be this way. Just like you create value for your business with a business model canvas, there is in fact a tool to intentionally visualize, design and test how you create value for customers. It's called the Value Proposition Canvas. The Value Proposition Canvas is composed of two parts, the Customer Profile and the Value Map. With the Customer Profile, you describe the jobs your customers try to get done. Jobs can be functional, like getting from A to B, social, like impressing friends and colleagues, or emotional, like gaining peace of mind. You highlight your customers' pains, which annoy customers while trying to get a job done. 
campaigns and negative outcomes that customers hope to avoid, like dissatisfactions of existing solutions and challenges, frustrations, risks or obstacles related to performing a job. And you outline customer gains which describe how customers measure the success of a job well done. Gains are positive outcomes that customers hope to achieve, like concrete results, benefits and even aspirations. Use the customer profile to visualise, test and track your understanding of the people or companies you intend to create value for. It's a map that becomes clearer the more you learn about your customers. The second part of the canvas is the value map. With it, you list the products and services your value proposition builds on. You describe in which way these products, services and features are pain relievers, how they eliminate, reduce or minimise pains customers care about, making their life easier and you outline in which way they are game creators, how they produce, increase or maximise outcomes and benefits that your customers expect, desire or would be surprised by. The value map makes explicit how your products and services relieve pains and create gains. Use it to design, test and iterate your value proposition until you figure out what resonates with customers. You achieve fit by creating a clear connection between what matters to customers and how your products, services and features ease pains and create gains. Great value propositions target essential customer jobs, pains and gains and do so extremely well. Your customer profile may contain countless jobs, pains and gains, but your value map highlights which ones you intend to focus on. But don't forget, an outstanding value proposition can still fail if your business model is flawed. Successful companies embed outstanding value propositions in scalable and profitable business models. Use the value proposition canvas to create products and services that customers want. Get started at strategizer.com. All right, so there you go. Now, with said canvas, um, you guys in your teams are going to start to go through uh, the canvas piece by piece. So we're going to split it into two pieces, the customer side of the map and then the value map side of the map. So we're going to start with the customer. Now, if you're doing this for real, you might not take the approach that I'm about to suggest. Um, because you want to figure out basically every single customer segment, uh, not just one. But what I'm going to ask you guys to do is pick one. So you'll notice up in the top of this canvas, it says customer segment. So write in the customer segment that you want to focus on. It could be anything. So for example, um, uh, Airbnb could be a host, like you could be actually putting your property on Airbnb, or you could be a vacationer, you could be a business traveler, they, they, all sorts of different um, potential customer segments. Okay, if that is confusing in the least, you guys have a bit of a cheat sheet that are, that's on your tables, and of course anyone with a butterfly sitting on their name tag will be more than happy to kind of clarify what that means if that's not clear. Once you've identified for your product, and there are no right or wrong answers here, so pick whatever customer segment is kind of resonating for your team. Once you've done that, you're going to, uh, you're going to fill in, and I'm suggesting only do three in the interest of time, the customer jobs that they're looking to get done. That may mean nothing to you right now. There's going to be another video coming up in two slides or three or something along those lines. And uh, hopefully it'll, it'll give you a little bit more clarity as to what that means because that's a super important part of this. You're going to then, um, and, and you guys, by the way, have post-it notes and pens. Uh, if you guys run out, there's more. Uh, but you're basically putting, don't write on this directly, you're just using this as a canvas and putting post-it notes on it. One idea per post-it note. So what you're doing in the pains section is you are coming up with some initial ideas as to the things that the customer, the negative outcomes that the customer is trying to avoid in getting these jobs done. And conversely, the gains are the outcomes they're trying to create, the positive outcomes they're trying to create in those jobs to be done um, 
uh, you know, as, as they kind of go through them. So here's just a couple of, uh, a couple of quick notes. So one idea per post-it note, please. So here's the interesting thing. We're, um, you know, we've got these three products, but they exist already. So when you do this for real, you're typically, hmm, you're doing it for something that doesn't exist yet. So that you're probably gonna find that a little bit tricky. So there's gonna take a l maybe a little bit of suspension of disbelief here in that it might be easier for your team, I'm not saying it will be, but it might be, it might be easier for your team to imagine that the product doesn't even exist yet. So let's say that this customer segment existed, like I'm a host for Airbnb, and I really, really, really wanna, I don't know, rent out my dingy basement, and there's no product out there that will help me do this. Well, these are the jobs I'm looking to get done, these are my pains and my gains, and there is no such thing as Airbnb. So if that helps, then kind of approach it from, from that perspective. This canvas is merely your initial guess. This is all assumptions. Can anyone tell me why these are all assumptions? Because we haven't talked to the customer, is that what you just said? Yes, exactly. So these are 100% not, not validated. So this takes a lot of iteration. Um, so this isn't a one and done kind of scenario. This is uh, a set of assumptions that need to be validated. So um, don't spend a whole ton of time trying to make this perfect. There is no such thing because your customer isn't sitting here. Or even if one was sitting here, there wouldn't be enough of your customer sitting here. So don't worry about making this perfect. This is just an exercise to kind of get you guys brainstorming in your teams uh, and, and coming up with kind of an initial guess that you can iterate from. All right, so now we're gonna get into what the heck I mean when I say, or at least Clayton Christensen means, when he says jobs to be done. We decided that the way we teach marketing is at the core of what makes motivation difficult to achieve. The most helpful way we've thought of it so far is that we actually hire products to do things for us. And understanding what job we have to do in our lives for which we would hire a product is really the key to cracking this problem of motivating customers to buy what we're offering. So I wanted just to tell you a story about a project we did for one of the big fast food restaurants. They were trying to goose up the sales of their milkshakes. They had just studied this problem up the gazoo. They brought in customers who fit the profile of the quintessential milkshake consumer. And they'd give them samples and ask, could you tell us how we can improve our milkshakes so you'd buy more of them? Do you want it chocolatey or cheaper, chunky or chewier? they get very clear feedback. They would then improve the milkshake on those dimensions and it had no impact on sales or profits whatsoever. So one of our colleagues went in with a different question on his mind, and that was, I wonder what job arises in people's lives that caused them to come to this restaurant to hire a milkshake. So we stood in a restaurant for 18 hours one day and just took very careful data. What time did they buy these milkshakes? What were they wearing? Were they alone? Did they buy other food with it? Did they eat it in the restaurant or drive off with it? It turned out that nearly half of the milkshakes were sold before 8 o'clock in the morning. The people who bought them were always alone. It was the only thing they bought, and they all got in the car and drove off with it. So to figure out what job they were trying to hire it to do, we came back the next day and stood outside the restaurant so we could confront these folks as they left milkshake in hand. And in language that they could understand, we essentially asked, excuse me, please, but i got to sort this puzzle out. What job were you trying to do for yourself that caused you to come here and hire that milkshake? And they'd struggle to answer, so we'd then help them by asking other questions like, well, think about the last time you were in the same situation, needing to get the same job done, but you didn't come here to hire a milkshake. What did you hire? And then as we put all of their answers together, it became clear that they all had the same job to do in the morning, and that is they had a long and boring drive to work. And they just needed something to do while they drove to keep the commute interesting. One hand had to be on the wheel, but somebody had given them another hand and there wasn't anything in it. 
and they just needed something to do while they drove. They weren't hungry yet, but they knew they'd be hungry by 10 o'clock, so they also wanted something that would just pull down there and stay for their morning. Good question. What do I hire when I do this job? Well, you know, I've never framed the question that way before, but last Friday I hired a banana to do the job. Take my word for it, never hire bananas. They're gone in three minutes, you're hungry by 7.30. If you promise not to tell my wife, I'd probably hire donuts twice a week, but they don't do it well either. They're gone fast, they crumb all over my clothes, they get my fingers gooey. Sometimes I hire bagels, but as you know, they're so dry and tasteless. Then I have to steer the car with my knees while I'm putting jam on them, and then if the phone rings, we've got a crisis. I remember I hired a Snickers bar once, but ah, I felt so guilty I've never hired Snickers again. But let me tell you, when I come here and hire this milkshake, it is so viscous that it easily takes me 20 minutes to suck it up that thin little straw. Who cares what the ingredients are? I don't. All I know is I'm full all morning and it fits right here in my cup holder. Well, it turns out that the milkshake does the job better than any of the comp competitors, which in the customers' minds are not Burger King milkshakes, but it's bananas, donuts, bagels, Snickers bars, coffee, and so on. But I hope you can see how, if you understand the job, how to improve the product becomes just obvious. I just want to get a couple of thoughts from you guys as to, yeah, like what did, what did you think? That that changed your perspective at all on, on product, uh, what we build, and if so, how? Anyone? Like, do you guys walk around every day going, oh, yeah, like I think of the world as a jobs-to-be-done world? You know, when I, when I want to produce an interrupt for a, to sell a credit card, that's a job that my customer needs to get. I need to get interrupted when I'm logging into my online banking so that I get offers for my credit card. Uh, yeah, I don't think so. Uh, well, okay, I might be in the minority. Anyway, so what did that change your perspective at all? Okay, how so? Yell it out. Could be more than two words. A more focused approach, focused how? You're identifying what you're okay? Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. I never thought, I don't know if you guys can hear that, I never thought of products, tell me if I'm paraphrasing you incorrectly, I never thought of products working for me. I thought of them as something that I use. Yeah. yeah isn't that cool? Yeah, freaky cool, I know. Clayton Christensen, he's the freaking man. I, what, what can I tell you? No, um, it's done. All right, all right. The moment is passed. Okay, so let's, let's keep going. So now we are going to get into you guys doing this. So now that you know what a job to be done is, I'm not expecting you guys to be experts. I don't know that I am myself. It's open to interpretation, and it's open to... Um, you know, to who in the heck the customer is. So again, these are your, these are invalidated and these are your initial kind of guesses and assumptions. So I'm gonna give you guys 10 minutes and what you're gonna do is focus on the customer section of your value proposition canvas only. So that means only that part, just the circle. Okay, so just the circle, you guys have 10 minutes uh, obviously for your product, whatever in the world the post-it note says on your canvas, for your product, 10 minutes, fill out the, um, the customer side of the canvas. Again, three jobs to be done max. I will tell you when you've got five minutes left.
Uh, you are a quarter of the way in. You're a quarter of the way in, so seven and a half minutes left. I can see that our facilitators are busily helping you all out. Yep, Jeff remains busy. Uh, ah! Wow, that was a close-up. <laughs> oh, yeah, thank you. Uh, you are halfway through. Halfway home.
Uh, we got about a minute 45 left. Minute 45. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a minute 45. All right, we are approaching the end. We are approaching the end. Fifteen seconds left. Again, this has to be nowhere near perfect. Absolutely nowhere near perfect. Let's go five, four, three, two. One, zero. All right. All right, really quickly, let's just get a couple of teams talking to this. What was that like? What was that like? Fun. Why we should never have fun when we do these things, never. Um, I'm kidding, I'm, I'm kidding. What, yep. So it was a mind twister uh, kind of thing. Th yep, please. It, it was a mind twister to think of something as a job mm. instead of a feature. Mm. I think all of us made the, you know, the normal uh, move to, I want this, I want this, I want this. But yeah. we didn't think about what job is it doing for us. I've got good news for you, sir. Uh, that's coming next. So the next part of the canvas, you're going to be able to, you're going to be able to do that. There's a, there's a reason why this canvas is engineered this way. Uh, to go from focus on customer first and those jobs to be done to features. So you guys are going to be mapping those two things together as best as you can um, in the next part of this, which we're going to jump into right now. Okay, so there's another side to this canvas, as you guys can very well see. So now it's time to start thinking about the features of your product. So I know that the canvas says products and services, but what we're going to focus on is the features of Jira, Facebook, and Airbnb. Again, just kind of in the interest of time. So let's come up with five max. So don't go absolutely nuts with a million features. Uh, five more than sufficient. Then, once you've got those features, what you're going to do is you are going to focus on the gain, well, whichever you like, either gain creators or pain relievers, and this is kind of how. So this is the how those features either solve a pain or create a gain. Okay? So that's where you're headed next. Then, what you're going to do as best as you can, you guys are going to connect features to jobs to be done, so exactly what you said. Uh, it's just, yeah, usually we kind of do it the other way around, but we're not doing it that way. We're, we're going to do it, you know, features two jobs to be done, gain creators the gains, pain relievers the pains, okay? So 15 minutes, and uh, yeah, please start.
about eight and a half minutes left. About eight and a half minutes. The only thing is, in about five minutes, you're going to hear from Tom. Uh, but don't worry about that right just at this instant. You guys just keep, keep, keep doing what you're doing. And uh, we're going to be going into a break after this. So just, just so that it's crystal clear, uh, there is a mapping between pain relievers and pains and gain creators and gains. Sure. So I, I just got a very interesting question. So I know that I said, and you guys are so damn good at following instructions, um, that I know that I said that we were doing this in kind of two segments, but that didn't, didn't necessarily mean that you were doing this second part in complete isolation of the first part. So a pain reliever is nothing if not in the context of a customer pain. A gain creator is nothing if not in the context of a customer gain. So don't forget, like, and, and you're going to, as best as you can, kind of map these things together. Like, don't forget as you articulate a pain, cre I'm sorry, a pain reliever, pain creator, yeah, that'd be an awesome product. Uh, pain, a pain reliever, for instance, uh, it's the how. So you might have, and it, 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 it's tricky, right? Like sometimes your feature is the actual how. Um, and it, you know, again, this is just an initial kind of take at this, but your, uh, your pain reliever might have a featurey kind of sound to it. It's tough. There's a, there's a line kind of between the how and the actual feature. The feature is intended to be abstracted out of the how, but if you've got kind of features all over the place, so be it. As long as those things link. As long as uh, gain creator links to gain, pain reliever links to pain, you're all good. Um, we may as well, I may as well not turn my mic off is what I may as well do. Um, so I'm going to get, so you guys are free to kind of keep going on this through the break. Uh, I'm going to throw it over to Tom just before the break because you're just doing the same thing, right? You're just kind of filling out the rest of the canvas on the uh, on the value map side and you're ma and you're mapping things together. That's really the extent to, to the remainder of this part of the exercise. Um, when, let's do a super quick kind of debrief on this. So what, what was that like? So I mean, so certainly you guys um, you know, were like, yeah, yeah, I don't know, these features and these pain relievers and these gain creators, like they all kind of seem like the same thing. Can you, can you guys kind of you know, just, just tell me a little bit more about that? Oh, OK, I was going to. Oh, yeah, that's a that's a pain creator. Oh, that's so gonna. 
I should, I should move over here. Hello. Um, so I think what, as we're going through the process, we, uh, a lot of the things we were coming up with, we felt we were solving something in all the compartments at once because mm. they're all everything that we would like to have and do. And, but it was just, it was not really clear how we can segment it off to be a pain, a, a gain creator and a pain reliever yep. while being a feature. And it just seemed like one big bucket. Yeah. It definitely takes some practice okay. with these canvases. Um, so uh, yeah, it was you know, certainly no, you, I wasn't expecting you guys to like spring to life and be complete experts right away. Um, so yeah, it takes, takes a little bit of practice and that's exactly it, right? So now you guys kind of have a feel for it. It's like, eh, this doesn't really make any sense. Yeah, please. So um, as if we evolve utilizing this strategy and this practice, what would be some questions to help compartmentalize uh, the way we think about about the pain and the gain and all that stuff, so we can segment it. Yeah, like it, it, so, uh, you know, I'll, I'll kind of, I mean, everything in context, of course. So I don't know which ones you guys are actually talking about. However, it's typically the case that the um, that the feature is kind of abstracted out of the gain creator or the pain reliever. Those are more the how, like how it's how it's getting done. Not the what. Not the what, exactly. That's okay. a very good way to put it, thank you. Okay. The what is the feature, the how is are those two. It's subtle, there's no question it's subtle and it takes a bit of, bit of practice. Mm -hmm. Fact of the matter is, if you're linking anything from the left-hand side of that canvas over to the right-hand side of that canvas, that's a good thing. Okay. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Tom Somerville, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay, this is, this is going to be a serious anticlimax here, because all I'm doing is telling you that it's time for a break. <laughs> uh, a couple of minor points. Uh, Wrangle have been extremely generous in purchasing pizza for us, so I really want to encourage you to have another round of pizza. Eat lots. There's lots there, and I certainly don't want to have Duncan having to take it home. <laughs> he uh, needs pizza. We have the whiteboard over there, as uh, John described, and so really uh, want you to uh, help us out with uh, what you're liking about the event, what you're not liking about the event, any suggestions, fire them up there on the board. There's uh, post-it notes and marker over there. My lovely assistant is showing. Uh, any other announcements, you can put them up there as well. And uh, there was something else. What else was I going to mention, John? Nothing? OK. Oh, oh, you know what? You know what? If people are hiring or know of any jobs that are available, or if you're looking for work, hang out over there by the, uh, the sign-in desk and uh, talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> job corner. Do job corner, that's right, the job corner. Uh, so, uh, so that's it. So uh, we'll take about a 10 minute break, and then we'll come back. Thank you.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you could uh, find your way back to your seats, I would greatly appreciate that. That means you over there, pizza eaters. Hey, it looks like we're starting again. I think we are, Jeff. Oh my goodness, I can't wait to see what's next. <laughs> we should come back from the break to our tables so we can find out what's next, Peter. Let's do that without me having a beer in my hand. Uh, Joanne's about to come and get everyone. <laughs> nope. That's right. If you didn't find a job in that time, oh well. All right, have I ever got a video for you guys? Even you guys lingering in the pizza area, have I ever got a video for you when you come back to your seats? Hey, Peter. Yes. Stop yeah. walking in front of the screen. Um, should I stand in front of the screen? No. If you like. Oh. To one side is just great. Can I, but I need to walk. You can, just not in front of the screen. Okay. I can do that. You know what? I'm conscious of the fact that there, that there are... Where did he go? He left. I'm explaining something to you. Yeah, I, I know. Be, what? But huh? there's people here. We need to get people. Okay, go. Guys, I'd like to invite you back to your tables if you'd like, we'd like to get started. If I can invite you back to your tables. If you guys are ready to uh, return to your tables. Tom says he's not coming back. I can see that. Okay, so we're going to... Ah, I'll wait till you come back. If you can hear my... <coughs> if you can hear my voice, clap once. If you can hear my voice, clap twice. If you can hear my voice, listen to Peter. Yeah, baby. <laughs> um, okay, so... Uh, I had a, a very interesting question. I'm not going to walk in front of the screen, even though it just says something meaningless, like 15-minute break, but I won't do it, because um, Jeff told me. So um, I, I realized that the stunning conclusion of the whole milkshake marketing video was, uh, was not revealed. So I don't know if that left you guys like dying for the stunning, look, stunning conclusion, like what happened? What happened? What happened? What do you think happened? They improved the product. Yeah, like how? What did they do? So, well, no, 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 no. I'm sure you do have an idea. So, uh, what what would you do given the job to be done? Given the job to be done, which was what? Do you remember? Long, boring commute. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, given that job to be done, what would you do to a milkshake to improve it? I would improve it. No. Best. Too far? Too Hello? Hey. Hi. Yes, okay. Uh, yeah. Sorry, all that suspense for, and I still don't really have a good answer. Well, uh, not make something up. Huh? It's all good. Uh, make it sit in your stomach longer. Make it sit in your stomach longer. Yeah. So how would, that, um, how would that accomplish the job that needs to be done, which is I'm bored. I got a long, boring commute. So now I got a milkshake that's sit sitting in my stomach longer. Yeah. Maybe if my job was I really want indigestion. Yeah, that, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, yes. You're doing so well. Say again. Put a flavors of, uh, mixture of flavors in it that surprises you. 
Make sure there's a flavor in it that surprises you. How would that accomplish the it job to be done? It would make you less bored and antis oh, it would make you less bored and anti and you would keep anticipating what the next flavor you're going to be Holy surprised smokes. by. Holy smokes! Wow, that's just mind blown. Mouth. You're t you are you saying like I've got a milkshake? I have no idea what flavor it is. I start <laughs> sipping on it and it changes, and I'm like, oh my god, tangerine. And then like the next second, it's like, oh, eggs. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm that is awesome. That is unbelievably awesome. Yep. Uh, I would make um, funky straws that are really thin. Yep. So that it takes longer to suck it out. Yep. And uh, <laughs> and it'll make it last longer. Yep. And I would make it a bigger cup. You would make it a bigger cup and a, a bigger cup of milk smaller shake straw. And yeah. A, and a thinner, li thinner straw, yep. really bendy. Yep. Really Got bendy. it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Sorry, uh, I'll, I'll, Matt, all the way at the back. Oh, I love it. That is clearly what needs to happen. Yep. Uh, I'd sell it along with a music player, like a CD to play in your car. Oh, so like as I sip I the milkshake, it so plays like different songs, like no, with the flavor change or what? It's just an added, like you get a milkshake, you get some music. Okay, I cool. You add little promo. I love it. I love it. Yeah. You guys uh, are destined to be milkshake product people. For oh no, wait one more. Because let's do let's do one more. No, two more. We're gonna do two more. Yep. Maybe maybe um, once they're done with the milkshake, you make the the straw or the cup like able to do something else. Like it's a craft that you can also create with your hand. Oh, and this is not dangerous <laughs> driving at all. With one hand, yeah. with one hand, the caveat. With one hand, so you're yeah. not looking at it, right? Like one-handed origami or something, yeah. or yeah. there's like a crossword puzzle at the end. There's a special message at the end of the cup that uh, you can Is there at. ever. Self-driving milkshake? Anyone? <laughs> oh, hang on, no, 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 over here first. Yeah. He healthier options for milkshake? Say again? Healthier options for milkshake? That still could stay longer. Okay. But healthy. But healthy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Sure. He didn't really care about health, or at least so they claimed. Yep. Okay. After one, that one, one I'm going to sound really crazy saying this. Yeah. Include a fidget spinner with it that you can play with one hand. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so now we definitely need self-driving cars here. Um, okay. One more. Okay. Yep. Yep. All right, I love it. What did he say? A list of, uh, on the, uh, on the uh, side of the milkshake cup, have a list of podcasts that you can listen to uh, with a strong warning that you're only to be reading these while at a stoplight. <laughs> awesome. This is, uh, this is really good. So, so by the way, this is how the story ended. So what they did is they ended up making a more viscous milkshake for the morning. So some, I think, yeah, you said like straw, something to do with the straw. So that's, that's kind of the dimension that they ended up kind of, uh, that they ended up uh, improving <laughs> at the end of the day. So yeah, cool. So at the end, you know, uh, it, um, you know, in terms of, of the dimension, I mean, he says at the end of it, well, so I hope you can see that when, you know, the job to be, oh, John, yes? Did they increase sales? Did, did they work? increase sales? I believe they did, yes. Yeah, there's an HBR article on this if you're super, super interested. Um, and it's got the whole long, sorted story in it. Um, and I can share it, actually, in whatever channel. I think we've got a Slack channel for, for this group. Uh, but those are awesome suggestions. Some quite dangerous, but still awesome. Okay, so now that you guys have filled out your canvases, now you might be wondering, well, so what? So I went and brainstormed a whole bunch of stuff around this thing called the value proposition. What the heck is a value proposition? Well, I've got a video for you. So what is a good value proposition? Hey, I've got a great idea for a business. That's exciting. Tell me about it. I've developed a chemical isomer that links to volatile organic compounds causing carbon bonds to rupture and wraps them in a nanotube coating. Huh. That's a little confusing. Can you dumb it down for me? Sure. What I do is I take a proprietary isomer that I developed with a picric acid wash that hollows out the carbon bonds and replaces them with a nanotube wrapping. 
Okay, so I guess it's pretty technical. Oh yeah. I've been working on this isomer for nine years. So what's the business idea? To sell it. To who? Everybody will want one. What for? So they can wrap their volatile organic compounds in carbon nanotubes. Hmm, I think you might need a target customer. I don't think I need to wrap my compounds in your nanotube. Well, maybe not you. So, for people who buy it, what's the value you are providing them? I've developed a chemical isomer that links to volatile organic compounds causing carbon bonds to rupture and wraps them in a nanotube coating. You've said that already. This is getting annoying. Why should anyone care about your isomer? I spent nine years on this. I know that. Okay, pretend I'm an investor. How can I make money off your product? By selling it. You're a smart guy. But try not to think like a scientist. Think like a business person. Okay. Value chain. Term sheet. I have to go now and answer that. That's not your phone. I know. So, clearly, a brilliant value proposition. Um, what about this one? So this is, uh, this is Square. I don't know, has anyone heard of Square? Who's heard of Square? Uh, okay, has anyone used Square? Like actually as a vendor? Like selling stuff using Square? No? Yeah, oh, hey, one, two, sweet. There we go. Um, what, huh? Your wife has used Square, okay. And you've used Square too? Okay, cool. Um, so, and I'm assuming the rest of you have used Square as a consumer. So this value proposition is from the perspective of, of Peter's wife. So someone who's looking to sell stuff, whatever that stuff may be, and, uh, and this is their value proposition. So I don't know if you guys can see this. Uh, I will read it out. Start selling today. Take care of your business anywhere with Square. Easy to use tools for every little thing, from mobile point of sale to tools and online invoicing to next day deposits and inventory management. Square has everything you need to run your business anywhere. What do you guys think of that as a value proposition with the backdrop of that video, which was clearly the best possible value proposition you could ever have? What do you think? Good, bad? I got a thumbs up over there. Yeah, I got another thumbs up. Good. Okay, cool. Um, what about this? What about this? Is this good? Has anyone seen this guy? This guy's in Toronto. Yeah, does anyone know this guy? Because I'm about to roast him. Do you know him? Okay. Does he, does he walk on two legs or four legs? He's a human. I had no idea. Like, I thought to myself that, you know, if you're a realtor and you're a lamb, like, on four legs, that you would be way better as a realtor. I'm a bit disappointed to hear that he walks on four legs. I have no freaking idea how being a lamb has anything to do with being a realtor. And, I mean, thinking about perhaps, God forbid, a job to be done for someone who's looking to either... Uh, procure real estate or sell it themselves, n really very little to do with you being a lamb. A tiring market. A what? A tiring market. A tiring market? What do you mean? <laughs> oh, lamb. Sheep? Yeah, but counting sheep. <laughs> okay. Well, you guys have thought about this way harder than I have. Uh, what about this one? Is this any good? This was actually this sign. <laughs> this sign was coming off of the DVP at Don Mills for the longest time. Like as you go, go like off the DVP at Don Mills, and there's dude Chris Clark. Don't get and, I, and I'm sitting there with my wife, and I'm like, what the heck does this mean? Like is he saying what I actually think he's saying? So what is he saying? Does anyone have any idea what the heck this means? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay. 
okay, so if you've got a big enough house, you don't need to get a divorce because like you can be all the way over there and I can be all the way over there. So the money that I would spend on a lawyer instead, spend it on Chris Clark's um, commission and just get a bigger house, easy. <laughs> well, that's what they want you to believe, um, sure. Yeah, exactly. So you're clearly not paying for it. Yeah, okay, sure. Um, let's not get into, into the vagaries of real estate and commission at this point in time. Um, uh, what about this one? What about this one? I mean, it's Gina. Are you buying or selling? Do you breathe air? Um, I mean, if you're in, that kind of covers it all. There's really nothing specific whatsoever in this value proposition that now that you guys have kind of gone through the exercise, exercise of understanding the jobs to be done to the customer, yeah, like, of course, buying, selling. Like, but it could maybe get a little bit more specific than that, don't you think? What about this one? I heard someone say, I like that one. You what? You have one. You do? Okay, what do you mean? You know what it is. Basically, the bag is a carry-on bag that fits into airlines, so you don't have to check your bag, but you wow. have enough of everything that you can pack in it so that you can just go with it as a carry-on, so you don't have to check a bag. So before you give that up, are you making that assumption based on what you just saw, or you actually have one of these? I, I don't. I have something very similar. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> All right. So I, it's seeming like this one's hitting the mark somewhat. Okay, I see some head nods. I see a thumb. Yep. You use Kickstarter. It doesn't what? Sorry? Well, what do you think it's for? Yeah? But, so, online shopping, okay. Okay, so maybe this isn't very good. Maybe this isn't very good. For some, it is. For some, it isn't. I mean, it kind of depends who your target customer is, what their jobs to be done are, and maybe, just maybe, this isn't, you know, this isn't hitting the mark, even, even if you were in that particular target customer market. Even if you were to be targeted by this, maybe this doesn't work for some. So that's kind of the tricky part. These articulations are, are tricky to get right and to get resonant with the target audience that you want them to be resonant with. So one of the tests that I apply when I write value propositions, and this is after I've written one, is and this should be fairly obvious after you guys have worked on your canvases, there's got to be some element of customer-ness to it, like some customer focus to it, some notion of job to be done, ideally, uh, mixed with, so sorry, like customer as in what customer, and then the, on the problem side of it, it's really more what am I trying to solve here at the end of the day? What's my job to be done? So if you at least have those two elements in a value proposition, for your target customer, uh, it stands a better chance of being resonant. So here's what you guys are going to do. Again, in your teams, um, you guys are going to have five minutes to go through your canvases and write out an articulation of your value proposition for your product. So again, this is going to you guys probably all have very different, um, very different target customers, even if you've got the same product. So you are going to write a value proposition based on what you've got in your canvas, um, and uh, it's going to be for that target customer for your product. So I'm going to give you five minutes, starting now. Yeah, also, uh, do me a favor, don't just go Google, Airbnb, uh, <laughs> Facebook, and Jira. Like, let's maybe try and be a touch more creative.
Two minutes remaining in your value proposition creation exercise. Two minutes. One minute remaining in your value proposition creation exercise. Uh, my very brief canvassing of our fine audience has led me to believe that we need another minute, so that is what we will get. So a minute left. Thirty seconds or so. All right. Now, I'm going to introduce you guys to a very quick and easy tool called a comprehension test. So this is for a, that would be my phone beeping, saying that you're out of time. Um, so this is a tool that you can use once you've got an articulation of a value proposition, and it's called a comprehension test. This isn't the only thing that you can use. This is just my, my intention here is to introduce you to a tool that you can use. So here's how it works. Dead simple. You read your value proposition um, to whoever you're testing this with aloud, uh, and that's it. Word for word, aloud, nothing else. No prompts, no nothing, just the value proposition. Have them recited back to you. And take note of the things that are missing, the words that get replaced, or any completely either blank or quizzical looks that are on their face, and that's where you can start to ask some more questions. So, now's your opportunity to try it out on me. So, who wants to perform a comprehension test uh, with their value proposition on me? Uh, did you do one? Okay, hang on a second. Yeah, wait, wait, you, you can wait. Yep, go ahead. Oh, hang on a second. We need a mic. Mike? Mike? Anyone? Mike? His name's Tom. Tom. Yeah, Tom, we need a mic. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. I can do this. I can okay, do so this. do you want us to tell you what our company was that we're starting with, nope. or just go? Don't okay. care. Yep, just value proposition. All right. Are you worried about your mortgage payments? Can you have extra space? Use Airbnb to meet your financial needs. 
Are you worried about your mortgage payments? N have extra space? Yep. Use Air, but no prompting. Use Airbnb to do something. I don't remember. Do you want me to repeat the last No, part I don't. Okay. So there's your indication. Okay. What's that an indication of? I would say the statement's probably too long for you to be able to recite it back. Yep. <laughs> what? Well, it could be if it was Airbnb, but if you're, uh, I don't know, water bottle and B, then no, you can't, <laughs> right? Like, so then if you're Nike, yeah, sure, you can get away with a lot of stuff, right? Um, but you're not. So when you're coming up with a brand new product that has a brand new value proposition, um, then, you know, this is a valuable test. Okay, yep. Rent your property stress-free while you're away. Rent your property stress-free while you're away. Huh, that's kind of cool. Full marks. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's go here first. Turn your spare room into spare cash. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Oh God, I don't even have to repeat that one. That's good. Um, okay. Does anyone have? Uh, what about another product like besides Airbnb? I have it. Yeah. Go. So, uh, become a facilitator without facilitating. Become a facilitator without facilitating? Yeah. I don't, what do you, s what? what? Did you come up with a different product? Yeah, no, it's Jira. <laughs> that is a, t yeah, I mean, if I don't know why how you use Jira, but I'm missing something. I'm missing something big time. So Hugo, you need, what you need to do is you need to be up here and do like a Jira workshop. It's like, by the way, this shit is magic. Like, you use Jira and you turn into Houdini. It's unbelievable. Okay, cool. Yep. So, you're home in every corner of the world. You're, and you know what? That kind of sounds vaguely like the actual Airbnb value proposition. <laughs> so, you are disqualified for Googling. No. <laughs> okay, what about Facebook? Has anyone got a Facebook one? Oh, and then we'll go to Jeff afterwards. Oh, yeah, I know you're one. The yep, one time please. he doesn't have a mic. Yeah, yeah that doesn't. Um, we have stay connected, never miss out. Stay connected, never miss out. I like that. Cool. All right, what's Jeff's? Let's hear it. Yeah. Let's, we, we came up with a few. One was, uh, one was Facebook, uh, protecting your information like no one. <laughs> Yep. And uh, the other one, the other one someone else came up with, which was Facebook, building a new and improved you. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Okay, let, one more. One more if we got one more. Oh, I got more. <laughs> no, not you. <laughs> one more. Any more? Yeah? No? All right. Oh, yeah, right here. Yep. One sec. Simple, easy to use, and unnecessary ticket management. Simple, easy to, to use, use what management? Accelerated ticket management. Simple, easy to use, accelerated ticket S management. Simple, easy, easy to, to use, use, and an accelerated ticket management. Okay, so you're really kind of training me through this, aren't yeah. you now? Um, <laughs> simple and easy to use, and I'm forgetting the answer. You know what? Here's the thing. When you said ticket, I thought you were like ticket master or something. I said ticket management. I know you said ticket yeah. management, but I just logged into my, my ticket master Blue Jays app because a buddy of mine was like, hey, dude, can you please transfer those tickets to me? And you know what that screen's called? Ticket management. Trouble ticket. No. Trouble ticket. Why is my phone on? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it... I mean, maybe, maybe if it's to, you know, a target audience who is tuned in to kind of that language, um, if you want to be kind of wider, then it's, then it's challenging, right? So that, that's where, so that was confusing to me and I'm in the business. So maybe not, maybe not. Yeah, maybe not. Yep. 
Oh, we got sure. one more. Look at this. You guys are like. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And I say Jared. Yeah. Okay. Didn't you guys do one already? No. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Okay. Ours is input test cases, output clarity. Jira. <laughs> <laughs> Don't clap. Input. Hang on a second. In input test cases. Yeah. Output clarity. Jira. Is that what you said? Yeah. Well, I think no. that's. No. No. I'm, no. Yeah, yeah. No. We didn't say that. You didn't. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I got it right. I don't know that I believe it, having used the product, but. Sure, I suppose we could say anything we wanted to. Okay. I've got cool. uh, one more here. Oh, yeah, we more. Look, it, this more. is just like never, yeah. All right, so, so this is uh, Airbnb, get paid when you visit your in-laws. <laughs> you can remember that. <laughs> yeah, I think I... <laughs> I think I got that one. Um, <laughs> very good. All right, awesome. <laughs> oh my, uh, well done. Like really, really, really well done. Um, okay, so you've got a value proposition. Uh, so what? So now what? Like what's next? What in the world do you do with this value proposition? Let's pretend for a minute that you were considering selling a credit card and you thought, wow, what a great idea. We're gonna put up an interrupt to sell this credit card. Um, or maybe it's just the credit card period. It's got, I don't know, God knows what feature. It gives $10 to the SPCA every single time you purchase something. I don't know, maybe, who knows. So, great, you've got a value proposition. You've maybe, you've come up with the first thing that you did now that you guys have this tool in your toolbox is you went and you did a value proposition canvas first. So I should actually back up just one second. I don't know if you guys noticed, but in that video, in that instruction video, they put up something called a business model canvas and they just glossed right over it. Well, the business model canvas, blah, 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 blah. Who, uh, who here has heard of the business model canvas? Okay, so a bunch of you. Um, that's simply a way, so just very, very quickly, long gone, I volunteered for a venture capital fund and this is where I kind of learned this firsthand. Long gone are the days of, um, of the gargantuan business case. Now certainly still in our kind of enterprise corporate world, we've still got to dent desks with, with, uh, with business cases and go and you know, uh, you know with pure fiction really, because we can't, we, can't, uh, we can't predict the future, unfortunately. Uh, so the, uh, in the startup world, for the most part, the business model canvas is a distilled one-page document that allows you to work through each aspect of your business model. You guys just work through two of them, customer segment and value proposition. There's also channels, so how in the world you're gonna reach the target audience that you believe you're gonna reach. There's a revenue box, there's a cost box, uh, and I won't bore you with the rest of the details. You can look it up, certainly, and ask me some questions about it. But the value proposition is dead center in the business model canvas for a good reason. It's really at the heart of everything that you're doing. So great, now, fantastic. You've got a value proposition. Um, so what can you do next to actually create this product that you now understand, let's just say, because you've validated uh, that, that it is true. So you've come up with your initial assumptions, now you've gone out and tested with your actual customer. Let's say you've interviewed them. Again, scary stuff, I know, but it can be done. You can talk to real customers. I know, crazy. Uh, so you've gone and validated with them, and now you've got some evidence that what is in your value proposition is actually true. So now what do you do? Well, you got a couple of different, you have many, many, many different options. Um, but a couple of them I've got up here. So you could take the features in your value proposition canvas and you could map those out as user activities in a story map and you could start decomposing that way. And then that could lead you to kind of a build out of your product. You could do the same thing kind of with jobs to be done. 
you could decide to use, if you've got a, if you need a more kind of strategic approach to how you want to build something out, you might want to use an impact map. First, understand what, what, in, what business impacts you intend to have. And then, um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with, with uh, business or with uh, impact mapping, but basically it, it takes you through a process of understanding what you've got to do to, um, to, to basically uh, facilitate your customer's behavior in the way that you want so that it has that business impact. So at the end of an impact map, you could certainly, I've, I've referred to them as leaves here, you could certainly map in, just one idea, the features that you've got on your value proposition canvas into the end of an impact map. And there's any number of other tools that you could use to kind of get you from, I've got a validated value proposition uh, into now what the heck am I actually going to build, which is the world that we tend to live in. So, the one thing that I know for sure is that um, we've got to get to a point where we're actually putting what I've got here, I've got the four letter word of MVP in at the end of this slide, which means absolutely nothing and everything all at the same time. Uh, but really, the point that I'm trying to make here is that we've got to slice something really, really narrow so that we can actually put it in front of these customers who we modeled out on our value proposition canvas so that they have something to validate against. Because even if you've gone out and you've interviewed them, people will tell you lots of different things. Until you put them in the present tense for these things, you really don't know what they're actually going to do. I had a laundry list of things that I thought I was going to do this morning. I'm on a plane down to spring training tomorrow. They're not all done. I mean, I certainly thought I was going to get them all done. Um, but we're terrible as humans at predicting our future behavior. So you've got to put your customer in the driver's seat and allow them to actually show you, prove to you that they're going to do what you believe they're going to do. And with that, I open it up to you for any questions. Yep. Let's wait. Yeah, Mike, Mike on the way. Thank you. It's not necessarily a question. Okay. It's Okay, more of a statement, but you talked about value proposition, the uh, business value canvas, um, value proposition canvas, and then you finished it with MVP, yeah. which is like minimum viable, viable product. Yep. But what about prototyping? Before getting to MVP, you can actually create a prototype, a very simple couple of clicks, create a focus group that can be your ta target customer, invite them to the room, and then ask them open-ended questions while they're testing your product or your prototype. And then you gather more information based on that. Then you can actually improve your product and then add some features or even prioritize your features, whatever you created, you, you put in your value proposition canvas, and then start building your MVP. And the first increment of your product is going to be closer to what customer actually wants. And then once they see it, they will either approve it or say, yeah, I like it, continue the way you're going, or that's exactly how I envisioned it. This prototype is actually turning into something good. So I guess it's turning into question. What about prototyping? Why would never use prototypes before actually jumping into uh, creating statements and user stories and activities and then building MVP and saying, hey, this is the first increment of our product. Yeah, and this isn't intended to be scripted, right? Like, I'm not saying this is the exact order that you could do it in. Sure, you could do that. But I'll tell you what, it depends what you mean when you say prototype. And I personally have an aversion to focus groups uh, because they're biased. So, you know, we feed people pizza, we give them pop, hopefully not beer, and, uh, and they kind of figure out what we, what we want them to say. So I come from a more kind of guerrilla perspective, from a lean startup perspective, and I'll give you uh, hopefully two quick stories. One is, um, as an example, so, well, I'll do it from the startup world. So uh, one of the startups I was working with uh, had, has anyone seen the movie Clueless? 
Clueless. Yeah, someone's seen Clueless in here. So the opening scene of Clueless had an app on a big kind of old PC called Dress Me. And this was, in essence, the idea. It, the idea was, look, there are people with, with wardrobe elements that they're not using in the back corner of their, um, of their wardrobes. Wouldn't it be great if we could uh, allow them to kind of see the value of, of that um, of these items in their wardrobe. So this founder came to me and said, I need you to help me understand how to build this in a prototype. And I was like, okay, sure. Can we do it simpler than that? So what we ended up doing to make a very long story short is instead of building an app, what we did is we got five early adopters to take their cell phones, hang each item of their clothing on a, on a white background from, an, you know, from the same distance, take pictures of every item of their clothing, and get someone to take a picture of them in a pair of shorts and a t-shirt. They sent the pictures to us, we printed them out, and cut them out of paper. Then we sat them down, and we basically went, splat, here's your wardrobe. And we sat back and we watched. Some people sorted stuff into tops and bottoms. Some people sorted stuff into, into seasonality. Some people immediately jumped in to making outfits. Now, that was the essence of the assumption that we were making. We were getting them to validate that essence, and we did it with, it took us no time, and it took us no effort. It wasn't, so, I mean, prototype. It depends what you mean when you say prototype. So prototype could go from something as simple as out of paper to something as complex as an app that you've built. So I would argue, make sure that you're trying to choose the simplest possible thing um, when you're building a prototype. My issue with focus groups really quickly, super biased. I would rather go out to the street and try and find my target customer where they are showing me that they are looking for a solution to the problem that I believe they're trying to solve. Do I have time for more questions or no? Not really. Okay. Uh, I think if there are more questions, then uh, I'm going to commit Peter to sticking around for a while, so uh, you can uh, come and uh, talk to him afterwards. But it is uh, 8.30 now, and uh, I think we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up there. I just want to quickly thank Wrangle for hosting us. I'd like to get you to applaud as well for all of our facilitators who... Yes, uh, please. Yes, please. And thanks to Michael for uh, helping out with the, uh, the materials. And all you guys for coming out. There's a card over there with beer cases, if you can put empties from the, uh, from the beers on that, and uh, any recyclables in the blue bins, and uh, if there's food and garbage on your tables, if you wouldn't mind just taking your own stuff and throw it out on your way out, that would really help out. And other than that, uh, what's that? Feedback. Oh, the feedback as well. If you do have comments, then yeah, the wall's still there. Thank you, everyone. Oh, oh one more thing. I, uh, I have a gift for Peter, and uh, the, uh, the the vendor, oh. which is top secret, gave me gave me a uh, a, a free gift bag. <laughs> Thanks, Peter. Our next meetup will be the third Wednesday of May, back in this location, and so hope you all can make it out again. Thanks a lot for coming. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, for those of you who are inclined to hang around. Uh, we will meet at Kelly's Landing, which is one.